Hey guys, in parts one and two of our snake breeding 101 series for North American colubrids, we taught you how to set snakes down into brumation and how to take care of snakes during the brumation process. So in today's video, we're going to keep moving right along and we're going to teach you how to wake snakes up from brumation and how to prep them for the pairing season. <music> Mr. Wilson, we're excited to be able to use our fancy bull snakes in videos again because they are now awake from brumation and you'll get to see more of them later on in this video too. First of all, the length of time you brumate your snakes is kind of up to you. The general rule of thumb for North American colubrids is about three months, but which months exactly is also up to you, honestly. Generally, people do December, January, and February, and they start waking up their snakes in March. And that's what we do too. We start waking up our snakes the first week of March, but I know some people who will put them down into brumation a month earlier so that they can then wake them up a month earlier, get a head start on the breeding season, and have babies available soon than anyone else, which that works. I mean, as long as you can properly prepare the snakes for brumation and they're not affected by like outside light patterns or anything, the snake's not going to know any difference. And so it doesn't really matter. But for us, again, we just wake them up the first week of March. Now there are two main ways that you can wake up snakes from brumation. One of which is to one day have your snakes uh, still asleep in the cooler weather and the next day you turn on their temps all the way up to their normal summertime temps. Or you move them from the basement all the way upstairs back into their summertime racks with normal temperatures. The other way to do it is to slowly, over the course of about a week, increase their temperatures just a couple degrees every day, and that more slowly acclimates them to their regular temperatures. Both methods work, and if you think about it, North American colubrids are pretty hardy animals because they deal with a lot of fluctuating temperatures in the wild, so you can do either one, whichever one you think is best for your particular animals. We do something that's kind of in between. We take about three days to bring them back up to temperature and that being like for these bull snake racks behind me we increase the temperature of their thermostat to 80 degrees when we're ready to wake them up from their 55 58 degree brumation temps and then a couple days later we move them right up to 90. You might think that moving a snake from brumation straight into their normal temperature in just a day is too fast or too harsh on their system, but we took our red-sided garters that were brumating and put them in their vision cage here, which is set up with their basking light, their UVB, you know, everything that they normally have. And Big Blue here, which is our red-sided that we got from Twin Cities Reptiles a couple years ago, actually, she immediately went from her brumation bin we put her on this cooler end and she went straight to the basking platform where it sits at 91 degrees. So she went straight there like in not even 10 minutes and she sat there for hours. So she herself decided to move straight from brumation into her full on basking temperature. And if she decided to do that, then it must have been all right. So while we're down here, I mean, they are up to temperature. The last thing I have to do with these bull snake racks though is remove the colored paper that was keeping them kind of dark because we use this, this room for other things too. And we wanted them to kind of be in the darkness like what they would experience in the wild in the winter. So I'm just gonna take all these off. There we go, now that the paper is off and their temperatures are back up to around, like I said, 88 to 90 degrees is what we keep them at throughout the summer, the spring, summer, and fall. Now they are ready to go for breeding season. We also have somebody who still looks pretty hungry. Oh, her? Yeah. Yeah, she's always hungry. She you have to be careful with because, okay, red tag, that means she has a big, feeding response and you have to be a little careful with hair. Now with the bull snake racks that we have here in our basement actually, this works great as a brumation room. So when we get them ready for brumation, we just turn off the heating element to these racks. So to warm them up, it's as easy as increasing the temperature of those heating elements back again. But for the other snakes that don't normally live down here, we actually have to move their brumation bins up the levels of our house back into their normal racks. And I'll show you how we do that next. For the snakes that we have to move upstairs, which are like our rat snakes and our hog noses, basically the snakes that we breed that don't live in those bull snake racks, we just move them from downstairs up here and we let them spend a couple days up here in our living room, which is like around 70-ish degrees, a little bit warmer than their 55 degree brumation temperatures. And once they've adjusted to that temperature, then we move them straight upstairs into their normal racks, which are already heated. So I figured while we're here, we would go through the snakes that we are finally waking up again, since we haven't seen them so long on the channel 
and I've missed them too because I can't play with them during the winter. So, don't mind these lights. These are for another video and they were weighing down the lid. Okay, who do we have first? It's our normal hog. She was a mom last year. Hey, Chunky. You didn't lose any weight in brumation, did you? So if you see snakes look a little bit thinner after brumation, I mean, they've gone three months without eating, so it's, it's normal. It happens in the wild too, but she looks as chunky as ever. Oh, this is Lumpy. And we have, I think this is our Het Snow. Yep, there's our Het Snow. Sassy as always. Oh, well, there he goes. Oh, you're so scary. Yes, good morning. How was your sleep over the winter? Doesn't seem too happy about it. Lumpy, on the other hand, he looks as calm as he was the day I put him down. Hey, buddy. It's good to see you again, too. Oh, Ooh, it's you. So this is our, it looks just like the other one, but there's a little difference. This is our pastel, technically. I still am not convinced that she's a pastel, even though we have oh, her lineage. Yeah, she's huge. We're going to breed her this year. I'm so excited. She is het toffee belly, so we could get some really pretty babies out of them. We're going to be breeding her for the first time this year. You guys are getting a little bit of a sneak peek for our breeding plans this year, too. That'll be a different mm -hmm. video. Who's in here? Oh, I see you. This is our condomorph hognose snake. Oh, you're still a little chilly to the touch. This was a mom to some of our babies last year, too. She's looking good. She lost a little bit of weight during brumation, but for the snakes that lose a little bit of weight, we just don't pair them right away. We give them several more, like, extra meals before we pair them up, just so they can regain some of that lost weight. But again, it is normal for them to sometimes lose a little bit. Next, we have our boys. There's two little boys in here. This is the pastel het toffee belly that we're going to be pairing with that big female I just showed you. And you can, when you're brumating them, you can put them, like, the same sex pairs together. Because, I mean, in brumation, they're so cold, they're not going to want to eat each other. And in the wild, they brumate together anyway. This one is another conda morph, and he was a dad of many of our babies last year, actually. Oh, it's Charlotte! Oh, I missed you! Hey, Chunky! Well, she didn't lose any weight during brumation. No, nothing at all. Oh my gosh. Okay, guys, this is, don't tell the other hog noses, but she is probably my favorite hog that we have. She is a twin spot albino. Twin spot meaning instead of the large central spots, she has two side by side. That is not a genetic morph. It's just kind of a random happenstance. So we aren't really expecting twin spots from her, but she is an albino. So we are hoping to breed her to get some albinos, which is a recessive morph. We've had her since before she had her first meal. That's how long we've had her. We got her from a breeder before she started eating and she has been amazing. I just love this girl. And now let's check out just a couple of the other snakes we have, which are in these bigger bins. Hmm, oh, I see a tongue. I know what that is. There's two of them in here. There they are. These are two female het scaleless rat snakes. Aw, you guys look great too. Yeah, I've been keeping an eye on all these guys during brumation, so it's not like a surprise. I kind of know which ones have started to lose a little bit of weight and which ones haven't. If they start to lose too much weight during brumation, you typically pull them out so that nothing happens. But in the wild, yeah, sometimes things happen during brumation. But if you can catch it in captivity, then you can prevent them from losing too much weight. But these two did fantastic. They look great. Stripey! This was his first brumation. Hi, buddy. Oh, you look great. I'm hoping to breed him to another bull snake of ours named Hannah, who I think will be breeding size this year. Uh, if not, then we'll just have to wait one more year or find another female for him. But we really want to reproduce this beautiful stripe pattern down his belly. We want to see if that's genetic or not. And he's finally going to be old enough to do it now. In this bin, we have oh, another one of our rat corns. She was a mama for from some of our babies last year. This is Buck. Hey, buddy, I missed you too. You are such a nice snake. He is our scaleless rat snake, and he is pure Texas rat snake, and he is such a friendly dude. Goes against the typical angry uh, personality that a lot of Texas rat snakes have. This is our hypo bull snake because we ran out of space in the bull snake rack downstairs, so we just had him in a 60 quart bin. This is a Trumbauer hypo, which there's two different hypo strains in bull snakes. There's Trumbauer, which is more of a, like an actual hypo, which means they lack black pigmentation. Instead, they have browns. The Stillwater hypo, on the other hand, is more of like a pattern morph. It has these dark colors on the head and dark on the tail, and they have these beautiful black outlines to the blotches along their back. It's a really pretty mutation, but it's not compatible with 
the Trumbauer hypo, who is escaping. I don't know what these look like if you have both types of hypo and the same type of snake, which is possible, theoretically, but I've never seen it before. So we might be experimenting with these two so that down the line we can get one that has both types of hypo. I don't know which one I like more. Which one do you like more? I kind of like the Stillwater. They're prettier. Which one do you guys like more? Vote for Trumbauer hypo or Stillwater hypo in the comments. I'm kind of curious now. These snakes have actually all been upstairs for a couple of days now, so they've really already adjusted to the temperatures. So now I get the joy of bringing them all upstairs and putting them back into their racks. Ed doesn't have to do this, by the way, because I made him move all of our fan mail from one level of the house to the other end of the house, so. He is off the hook for this. <sighs> now I have to figure out where they're all gonna go. Cheyenne has a lot to say. Yeah. She has a new collar on that's yeah. working. She's got a plucking collar on. Yeah. So we're gonna put our pastel het toffee belly on this side. Just kind of set them up quick. And then on the other side, we'll put the conda phase mail. Here you go, buddy. Now, just like these two, anything we have information together, we're now going to separate. Well, everything is back on heat, except some of them haven't quite gone over to the warm end quite yet. We literally just put all of their bins back in the racks. Now is when you get to start feeding them again. Now, when you pair your snakes is up to you. There's three different um, techniques when it comes to feeding versus pairing snakes after brumation. First, as soon as they come out of brumation, you can pair them right away. That's what some breeders do with success. Two, you can feed them one meal and then pair them immediately after that. And three, some breeders will feed the snakes twice as often as they normally would to A, I mean, help get that weight back on them if they lost a little bit during brumation, and B, they feed them to get them in breeding mode. And they wait until the snake goes through a post-brumation shed, which means it's the after-brumation shed. After that shed, the snake should be cycled and ready to be paired. We do kind of a mixture of all three, depending on the individual snake. Some of our snakes lose a little bit of weight during brumation, and for those, we feed them uh, about twice as often as we normally would until they gain enough weight and they shed, and then we pair them to the males or vice versa. Sometimes the males lose a little bit of weight too. For a lot of our snakes though, the ones that don't lose any weight during brumation, we either will pair them right away, because in the wild, a lot of snakes come out of brumation and they start breeding before they even eat a single meal after warming up. But most of the time we like to at least offer them their first meal, and then if they take it, we pair them right afterwards. So let's see if any of the bull snakes are willing to eat today, now that they're warmed up. All right, let's see who's hungry. We're gonna start over here with Mr. Wilson. Usually he only eats if I lay his rats on the cork bark, but usually the first meal out of brumation, they're a little bit more excited because it's been three months since they ate. So let's see if he will take it from the tongs. Nope. I'm just gonna push it. Yep. Still typical Mr. Wilson. We'll just lay it right there. Usually the first meal we give them, because you might have noticed that's kind of a small rat, the first meal is a bit smaller than usual because we would just want to make sure everything's, you know, functioning properly and their system gets kind of restarted for the rest of the year. I think I know who will eat. She's uh, she knows where her food comes from. Yeah, she does. And it's up there. Okay, Brad. She's gonna be upset that you're giving her this small of a meal yeah, too. She is. Oh. And it's way over there now. Hi. Since she was staring at us earlier, let's see if this albino wants to eat. Hi, sweetie. Will you eat for us? Oh, yes, she will. Oh, okay. I guess that's yours now. Let's eat him there. There you go. All right, perfect. And she's gonna rip cheese. There goes Stillwater number one, and Stillwater number two is also eating. Come on. There you go. Oh, there. Eat him there. Keep it clean. There. Man, they are excited today. Yes, they are. I think they're hangry, technically. Oh, I'm sure they're, they're bull snakes, of course. They're always hangry. They're always hangry. <laughs> this is our male white-sided bull snake. Can't tell he's white-sided because he's all constricting right now, but he is head hypo, so we should be breeding him for the first time this year. This is a ghost morph, which is a hypo white side, so he's technically a false ghost for those of you who are familiar with the morphs. Oh, Let's he see. looks tired. Uh, he is not a happy camper. He was hissing at me for 10 minutes straight. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're just gonna hiss. No, he wants it. Oh, there you go. You just have bad aim. Wow, look at that coil. That's beautiful. It's like a perfect coil. All right. 
Here, let's eat in here. Well, you have fun with that. My goodness. <laughs> he's really got to kill it. Are you done? Yeah, I think he's. I think he's, I done. Think he's done. Okay. <laughs> oh, bull snakes! <laughs> I love bull snakes. So that's pretty much it when it comes to waking up your snakes from brumation and feeding them their first meals afterwards. As you can see, there's a couple different ways to go about doing it, but again, just do your own research and make that well-educated decision based on the animal that you have. Part four of the breeding series will be the exciting part, one of the exciting parts, which is pairing up your snakes. So stay tuned for that coming out here pretty soon when we start pairing our snakes. And we'll also be doing a Breeding Plans 2020 video that'll also be coming out. So stay tuned for all of that fun stuff now that breeding season has almost officially begun. Thank you to all of our Patreon backers for supporting this channel. That's the male ghost. Oh, that's the male ghost. Yeah, he's getting hissing. His... He's hissing at us. He's mad at the rat. Yep, that's why I'm holding the female, because yeah, she's a lot, she's nice. lot better than that male. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time. What? Jeez, oh. what is your problem, dude? You didn't even eat yet, did you? Nope. Nope. He's just upset with the world.